Hello everyone and welcome to the Shrimpy channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Binance Exchange. As you can see, I'm currently on the Binance website. I've already logged into my account. So if you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and take the time to go through the signup process. It's a pretty easy process, so it should only take a couple minutes. Once you've signed up and you have your account all ready to go, the first thing that we will want to know is how do we deposit funds into our Binance account? This is done by looking at our wallets. As you can see, we have a number of different wallets. We have the spot wallets, the margin, futures, P2P, savings, and pool. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on the spot wallet because that's where we deposit and withdraw our funds from the exchange. Once we've loaded up the spot wallet, what we can see is we have fiat balances and we have crypto balances. Fiat balances are where we will deposit our fiat currencies. Later, we could use the exchange to execute trades between fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies. Another option, if you don't want to deposit fiat currencies, you can deposit crypto balances. Let's go ahead and take an example really quick. Let's say we have Chainlink somewhere, say in a hardware wallet or something like that, and we want to deposit that to the exchange. All we have to do is select deposit. Immediately, we will see this QR code that shows up. So this is the QR code for my account. So you should not use this QR code for your account. And this is the link address for my account as well. Once again, do not use these addresses. You should go to your account and use your addresses. If you use my addresses, they will go to my exchange account, which means that the funds that you deposit would go to me, which we don't want that to happen. Okay, so now that we know how to deposit, let's say we deposited some funds into our Chainlink account. Once we've done that, now we can start using the spot exchange to execute trades from Chainlink to other cryptocurrencies on the platform. The way that we do that is go to trade right here, and then we could select classic. So classic is the most typical way that people will execute trades on the Binance exchange. This is where you will see the order books on the left hand side. You will see our chart in the middle where it shows the price of the currency over time. And then on the right hand side, we see the orders that are being executed in real time. Since we deposited Chainlink in our example, what we will want to do is go ahead and look for the Chainlink markets. Likely, there are probably fiat Chainlink markets as well as BTC Chainlink markets. Let's say we wanted to move our funds from Chainlink to USDT. We can do that by going to USDT and then looking for Chainlink. Chainlink would be under link right here. As you can see, this chart right here is showing us the price of Chainlink in terms of USDT. Over the last couple months, it's been an impressive run where Chainlink has increased in value pretty significantly. And the way that we would place an order on the exchange is through this little box right here, where we could see the options for limit order, market order, and stop limit. For this tutorial, we will focus on limit orders and market orders. In order to execute a limit order, what you have to do is select a specific price and amount on the exchange. You can select the price by moving this up and down right here and selecting a price. It will automatically populate that field. When you're buying Chainlink from USDT, if you want those orders to execute immediately, you would want to place an order up here in the asking side. If you were selling Chainlink, for example, in our case, and you wanted the order to execute immediately, you would place an order down here. So you would select a price that's below the current bid price for selling Chainlink to USDT. So we could select a price like $16.14, and then we would enter the amount of Chainlink that we'd want to buy or sell. In this case, we'd be selling Chainlink, so we'd go over here and we would enter an amount. For example, if we deposited 10 Chainlink, we can put 10 in that column and then execute the sell by clicking the sell button. On the other side, if we wanted to buy Chainlink, say after a couple weeks, we sold Chainlink, 
But then we saw that the price of Chainlink was starting to go up again, and we wanted to buy Chainlink. We could do that by typing in this column, the price of Chainlink that you want to buy, could select the price, and then we could enter the amount of Chainlink that we want to buy. So imagine we can buy 10 Chainlink with the amount of USDT that we have. We just put in 10 here and then select buy Chainlink. Similar to limit orders, there's market orders. The major difference for market orders is you can't enter a price. You can only enter an amount. This simplifies the process so you don't have to look at the order book and try to pick out a specific price that you want to buy it. Instead, it will automatically look at the best prices available on the exchange and take those orders for you. Notice that market orders cannot place open orders on the exchange. The orders will execute immediately. So if you wanted to buy 10 Chainlink, essentially what the exchange would do is it would look at the best asking prices for Chainlink on the exchanges, and it would systematically execute the orders until you've purchased 10 Chainlink. If you consumed one level of the order book and there was still more Chainlink that you needed to purchase in order to get to that 10, it would take the next available open order on the exchange and it would continue this process increasingly until you got your 10 chain link. This process of consuming consecutive levels of the order book is called slippage. Slippage can become a problem for people with high net worth who are executing large trades on the exchange. For example, if we wanted to buy a million chain link, this would be a problem because it would continue to execute the order and buy more and more and more and more chain link at worse and worse prices for small balances like 10 chain link it's certainly easy to use market orders on the exchanges but when you're looking at large balances or large trades that you're trying to execute you should be cautious with using market orders okay now that we've talked about how to buy and sell cryptocurrency on the exchange let's talk a little bit about how you get your money out now that you've used binance for some time Imagine you want to withdraw your funds from Binance. Maybe you want to put them into a hardware wallet. Maybe you want to put them somewhere else for safekeeping. We can do that by withdrawing the funds from this wallet that we deposited from. Now that we're back to this page here, you can see all of the different assets that we own. It should be noticed that I currently have hidden balances on, so you can't see how much in each cryptocurrency I have. But now that we want to withdraw the funds instead of deposit, all we have to do is select the withdrawal option. This will load up the link page. You need to type in the address that you want to use for the withdrawal. Make sure you double and triple check that address to make sure it's correct and it's for link. And then select the amount that you would like to withdraw. It will show you the transaction fee for making that withdrawal. And then once you are ready, you can click submit and the exchange will process the withdrawal and send the money to that address that you have input in this field right here. One thing to notice is this process would need to be repeated for every crypto balance that you wanted to withdraw from the exchange. As you can see on my exchange account, I have a number of different assets. So I would have to go through the process continue to select withdrawal on each and every one of the assets that I wanted to withdraw and make sure each time that I'm inputting the correct address to withdraw those funds and selecting the amounts that I want to withdraw. Once that process is complete, you're free to do whatever you'd like with those cryptocurrencies since they're withdrawn from the exchange. Now, these are not the only features that are available on Binance. Binance has a lot of different features. It's one of the most advanced exchanges available in the cryptocurrency space, but we won't discuss those all in this video. We will go through a high level of some of those quickly. As we briefly discussed, there's a number of different wallets. You have the margin, the futures, and the savings. If you're looking into derivative markets, they have futures markets and leverage tokens that you could take advantage of. In terms of trading, not only do you have the classic view, but you also have more simple views like the basic cryptocurrency trading interface and the advanced trading interface. And that's paired with the margin, OTC, and P2P options. 
as you get more comfortable with the exchange, we recommend exploring these different options to see if there's something that you'd want to leverage for your portfolio. However, it's not a problem if you just want to stick with the classic trade on the spot markets and accumulate your value in that way. And then of course, there's a couple different options to buy cryptocurrency. You can use bank deposits. They support credit cards and debit cards now. You can also do the P2P trading, cash balances, and third-party payments. This is just a very high level overview of what's available on the exchange. Their offerings are constantly evolving, changing, expanding. So keep up with everything that's going on by tracking their progress through their announcement channels. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We're always happy to help. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you on the Shrimpy application, and I hope to see you in the next video.